Hey everybody, Kevin Elliott here with Home Dabbler. I get a lot of questions from you fellow dabblers out there about composting. And so today what I'd like to do is a quick little video on a special kind of composting that I've been doing for years and that I love to do. I call it kitchen composting. That's right, you're going to take all of those scraps that come out of your kitchen, your banana peels, your apple cores, even your coffee grounds and your paper towel rolls, stuff like that. And we're going to turn them from stuff like this, gross, to this. Look at that. Beautiful, dark, black compost. And it's really simple to do. You're going to kick yourself for not doing it sooner. So. The first thing you really need to know about composting is that there are simple, simple ingredients and there really are only are three or four. So to help you remember them, I'm going to give you three colors to remember. The first one is green. Okay, green. Green represents nitrogen. It's a major ingredient in compost. It's actually what helps heat the compost up. It gives it, it, uh, it sort of its fuel. So uh, nitrogen green can be anything that is not totally dead and brown, completely, completely dried out and dead. So out of my compost pile here, let me see. Orange peel. I think that used to be a banana peel, <laughs> something like that. Those kinds of things that we normally just don't even think about. We chop up a salad, we throw away the, the ends of the tomatoes and things like that. So that's your nitrogen. You wanna keep all of that stuff and throw it into your compost. The second main ingredient is brown. Think brown for carbon. Nitrogen, green, carbon, brown. Now brown is anything that is totally dead. Vegetable matter, still vegetable matter, but it's totally dead and brown. So that's going to be things like your paper towels, uh, your toilet paper rolls, even paper plates. Uh, if you don't have enough of that out of your yard, come out and rake some old leaves up or anything like that. Totally brown, dead. Carbon, so nitrogen, Carbon, green, brown. The third color and ingredient is really two. It's blue. Think blue, think water and air. So carbon, nitrogen, and water and air, and then let nature take its course. Because what you're really doing when you're composting is simply controlled rotting. That food's gonna rot somewhere anywhere, <laughs> whether it's in a landfill or wherever. So you might as well harness the energy of that rotting to make free compost for your yard. Now, um, I keep our, you may be asking yourself, so in your kitchen, Kevin, do, what do you have, like a giant pile of disgusting uh, kitchen scraps laying on your counter? No, we don't. We actually, this is our little compost uh, bin. We keep this on our counter and when we, when we throw things away, so like, look, there you go. You have a napkin on top, there's some onion. Just, you don't even have to, it doesn't be very pretty. You don't even have to cut it up. Just, toss it in there. I think there's a uh, there's a JCPenney receipt in my compost. So, so there you go. Any kind of products like that, put them in your little bin. It doesn't have to be very big. Set it on your counter and when it gets full, just walk out and dump it in and off you go. Okay, so that's your nitrogen and your carbon. Now, lots of questions about vessels. What do I do this in? And you may have even seen some of those really cool fancy tumblers that people use and they have the crank on and they step on a stand. Those, by the way, are completely awesome. I love those and they work like a charm because they get the air in, they mix everything up. I am cheap and so I haven't invested in one of those monsters yet. I hope to one day, but um, so far uh, I have found a way to do it just as well, a little bit more work, but just as well, super cheap and that is the plain old fashioned galvanized garbage cans. These work awesome. Now all you have to do is make a couple of modifications, namely, sorry chickens, you need to drill some holes in the top of your can. See, there are just five holes around here, real simple. And then drill holes in the bottom of the can so that, you, and then we just leave them out here in the rain. So when rain comes along, it'll rain through the top, it soaks through your, uh, your compost and out the bottom, and there's your blue, there's your water, and you are, assured that you won't get too much water because the uh, what happens inside that when you when the the process of composting or rot really kicks off the carbon the nitrogen and the water come together this the magic of compost really comes into play because that's when the microbes 
get involved. It's very much like bread making, a few simple ingredients and then some microbes, and they do the rest. Uh, you throw that in there, and they need air. So they, you, they do what they call an, an aerobic rotting or processing of the material that's in that compost. And so what will happen is you will create this beautiful, totally alive little ecosystem in your garbage can. You might even get worms in there if you're lucky. Worms are the best composters on earth. They'll crawl up through the holes and they'll get into your compost. So what can happen is that you get this beautiful um, living biome going on in your garbage can. It's, it's really kind of magical actually. Now, I get a lot of questions about this too. They say, Kevin, look, you're throwing, you're just throwing stuff into the garbage can here. Now, if I throw that same stuff into my garbage can and leave it out for several days, it stinks to high heaven. Good question. If you do your compost right, this is actually the way to know if your compost is in a good balance of carbon versus nitrogen versus water, and if it's not, because the smell will tell you. If your compost, if you look in your compost bin one day, you look around and it looks black and greasy and it stinks, okay? That is a telltale sign that you have too much nitrogen, too much green. It's You don't have enough carbon in there to sort of absorb all of that stuff, and the, and the microbes are not plentiful enough to take all the nitrogen in. You've overloaded them, and so now it is truly going to stink. Now, the telltale sign of really, really good compost is it smells like the earth. I wish you could smell this. It, it smells like the most perfect thing you have ever smelled. So if you find that your compost is just dry and it's not really doing much, you don't see it kind of turning into something, you don't see it getting darker, you don't see it breaking down. If that happens, that means you have too much carbon and you need to throw a little bit more nitrogen in there. So more kitchen scraps. If you don't have enough kitchen scraps going on, maybe you're single, just a couple of you, whatever, you can actually go down and buy some manure. I'm fortunate, you probably can tell, I have a whole whole herd of chickens here, so I never, never lack for chicken manure. It's super high in nitrogen. So anytime my, my compost starts to lag a little bit, throw a little um, nitrogen in there, a little chicken manure, and we're off to the races. Now, what happens in there when that carbon and the nitrogen and the water and the air all mix up, the bacteria and the microbes go to work, they actually will heat up. They'll heat up the interior of that compost because that's when they can really do their best work. And they will process that and they will produce uh, two things. They will produce carbon dioxide, that, which will aerate your compost. The second thing is they will break down all of that stuff you threw in there into its most basic elements. So that's, why, that's how you get go from this uh, to this. It's all about the microbes. So I have two cans that I use because what I don't want to happen is I, I don't, if you don't let it sit for a while to finish off, you will end up just continually filling this and never get any really good compost. So I have a two can method that we've developed around here at the Elliott household. So when I get one can that's doing really, really well and it's starting to really cook down and it's, it's looking nice, I will just put the lid on it and leave it alone. And then I'll take a little bit of the compost out of there. Think of it like sourdough bread, where you need that starter from one loaf to the other. I'll reach in there and I'll grab a few handfuls of that beautiful composted earth. I'll pick it up, throw it in the new can before I start putting in my carbon and my nitrogen. What that does is you're transferring a little colony of those really healthy uh, microbes and bacteria. You're throwing them in there and getting a good starter. And that next, that next batch will start off just like that. So then I have one working all the time and one finishing all the time. Then we'll dump this out and I'll move this one over and we'll start the whole process again. Now, the last thing you need to know is you're going to have to periodically mix this stuff up. You need to turn it, keep it moving. Because again, it's aerobic. You need aerobic microbes. So I, this, is my, this is my compost shovel. It's actually a trenching shovel that I used to use for irrigation type stuff. And it has this cool little bend on it. That helps me inside this, this long can. This is really the only thing I don't like about using these cans. It's hard, a little harder to turn, but it's not that big a deal. So you just stick this down in there every so often. Okay, you can beat it up. It's a metal can. Beat it up and spin it over. Get a little air in there. 
Now, how long will this take to happen? Once you start, if you get it right, once you start a good compost bin, once it starts and it gets going after the first couple weeks, you can expect to have beautiful, dark, rich compost in about three months. So about once a season, you can have a beautiful bin full of dark, rich earth. Once a season. That's pretty nice, right? For kitchen scraps that you are going to throw away anyway. So that's the basics of composting, kitchen composting. It's really quite easy, and it's fun to watch that trash, that garbage, turn into something beautiful and useful. It makes me want to sing Circle of Life. If I had right to the music, I would be playing it right now over the background. So if you have any trouble with this when you're out there trying it, just message me through the Facebook page. As always, I'm here to help. I'll answer your questions. Just shoot me a photo of what you got going on, and we'll diagnose it and get it right for you. So get out there, play with it, and make some compost. Thanks.